Hallelujah, folks. Well, after many more experiments with reproducible results, good and bad, I discovered the problem that I was having was, was with the flats themselves. And having said that, the default settings using uh, weighted batch preprocessing are a bit more finicky with questionable flats than Deep Sky Stacker, which appears to be a bit more forgiving. I am Kurt Zepp, and you're watching AstroQuest 1. Okay, first I'd like to thank everyone who commented and gave some advice on my previous video with regard to this subject. So, what new information do I have to be more definitive? Well, I collected a whole bunch of data and I was able to finally produce some really good flats. And I used, I don't know if you can see this, my light board, my drawing board that I I mentioned I purchased during the last video. I also made a little white t-shirt flat holder using one of those embroidery rings. And I, I have more of these white sheets of paper. And I was very careful to get longer exposures with my flats. And, and basically I spent some time with it. And also I was able to reproduce the bad result and compare it to the good result. Also, I must have done 15 or 20 additional stackings on various targets throughout the last couple of weeks. And they, that was very time consuming and very tedious and I'm really glad to be done with it. But it did allow me to really hone in on what was actually the problem. So let's go take a look at these highlights and some conclusions that I have. Okay, folks. Well, here's my original data for the, or my original image, stacked image from the Cat's Eye Nebula. And this is when I used my original flats from July 12th, and I used darks and biases, and we all know what happened. I had this weird reddish whatever artifact, and the dust bunnies were not removed. If anything, they were made worse. So it seems to be some overcompensation with the flats. I don't know. Anyways, this right here, it's the same image. It was, I just redid it. I wanted to make sure I can reproduce the bad image, which I did, which is good. I only used the partial subframe, so, however, because I didn't want to spend the entire night restacking. So then here's the same data with a new set of flats that I made July 25th. And I used darks and biases uh, for this one. And the image came out really flat, really good. I was very happy with it, most delighted. And I used, again, I used PixInsight weighted batch preprocessing. And over here, this is that same data, only I did not use flats. I just used darks. So I got rid of the, uh, the amp glow and whatnot. And you can see there's still a little bit of this reddish whatever still in this image. So... Perhaps that is something on the sensor, but flats should remove it, or at least good flats should remove it. And you can see the dust bunnies are here as well. There's one here, and there's some, there's several of them I can see. Them. I don't know if you guys can. Okay, let's take a look at my last set here. So this is the same data, but I made a new set of flats on August 19th and redid this image. And again, it came out pretty well. It doesn't have that reddish whatever. So that's what I was mainly concerned with. Now, it does have these dust bunnies here, but I'm not too concerned with them because in between the original, the other flats, which were made on July 25th and this one, which was made August 19th, I had the camera off the scope. I had different filters on here. I did a whole bunch of um, stuff. So these dust bunnies are just a holdover, and they wouldn't have gotten. Re I'm not concerned that they didn't remo weren't removed from these new set of flats, because, like I said, I totally poor part of the system. I just wanted to see if it would get rid of that red thing, which it did. The other thing is, I I did this with dark flats this time, so I made a set of dark flats, and over here, this is when it, when I use biases, and I just wanted to see if there's any difference between using bias and using the dark flats, 
And at least for my set of data here, there doesn't seem to be any difference between the bias or the dark flats. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to use dark flats. I think I, I, they make sense to me. So I think I'm going to here and I'll just continue with dark flats. Uh, they're very easy to make. And just because I don't see it on this image, there may be another image where they actually would make more of an effect. All right, let's take a look at my conclusions here. So poor quality flats resulted in an overcompensation when using Hicks Insights weighted batch pre-processing using the default settings. If you're really good with Hicks Insight and you do things separately rather than the default setting, you may, have, may be able to use poor quality flats. The ZWO MC Pro may have something on the sensor, but it may intentionally be there, and it should be removed with flats anyhow. It would be interesting to be interesting to check with ZWO, so I may follow up on that. The main thing: make sure you have a uniform light source when making flats. Get a light board or something, and just make make your flats very carefully, which most of you, I'm sure, probably do that. And the dark flats did not produce any noticeable results or a noticeable difference in my images. However, they do make sense and they're very simple to make. So therefore, in my opinion, use these instead of bias frames. And lastly, Pix Insight likes the ASI 294MC Pro after all, at least under the right circumstances. Anyways, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.